Wer sind die Donauschwaben? Who are the Daniel Schwabs? And then it says, im Auf und Ab der Jahre, it was up and down for the Daniel Schwaben, up and down in life. Uh, okay. So, can you tell me what life was like for you before the war? I was only eight years old, uh, living in Yugoslavia in a small town. Our ancestry uh, goes then back already. My great-grandmother was already born in the same town, so it goes back probably almost 200 years. Um. So, in the interview you shared with me previously, you said that um, your family ended up being separated um, from your father during the war. How did that end up happening? That was, that was because uh, we wanted to go back home to save our house and our land. And as, uh, well, first of all, let me, let me go that way. We had to leave our homeland, our hometown, because the partisan, the communism, after the war stopped, we Germans that were still there, they wanted to kill us. We had to leave. We had to leave. Uh, and so we went on horse and buggy. My aunt with three children, with two children, my mom with four children and my grandmother and my aunt and my mom on one wagon, whatever we could put, put on, a covered wagon, and went, uh, left. So did everybody else. Whoever didn't have horses in a buggy, they were shipped by train. And they, had to, they went uh, uh, to East, what, what was used to be East Germany, that they, they uh, took them over there. And we traveled through Hungary, and into Austria. And the Austrian people had to take us in because we, did, we were homeless, okay? So they took us in and uh, at, at a farmer in, uh, in, uh, in uh, nine months into that while we were living there, the Russians came by and said to us, go back home, everything is okay back home. And that's all what my grandmother want, wanted to hear. Everything is fine. So they took ox and a, a wagon, a flat wagon, put us on there, and we traveled back home from Austria into to Yugoslavia. So as we came to the border of Austria and Yugoslavia, they took everything away but what we had on and put us in concentration camp for three and a half years. And then uh, we went from one camp to the other, totally. Everybody has a different uh, uh, situation, but my situation was that, that uh, so we, we came from one to the other. Sometimes we had to walk, sometimes they put us on a train and, uh, uh, and, and went uh, and were there for uh, uh, seven, eight months, and then again someplace else. So uh, the last camp that we were in, a lot of people died, and we were very lucky that none of my family died. Uh, we were the first, we were all in barracks on, on wooden floor, uh, wooden bump beds, just a cover, nothing else, just a plain wood, and we were full of lies. We were, we were undernourished, we didn't get much food in the mornings, we might have gotten lukewarm water. And uh, what they tried to do, not kill us by gun, but kill us, kill us by starvation. And a lot of people got sick, were very ill, very ill, so was I. I had, I had every sickness you can imagine. I had typhus, I had cholera, I had everything that a person gets when you don't have nourishment, okay? So they took me and a few other uh, girls out of the camp into a farmer's barn and put us on a straw in a barn. And we were laying there for two weeks. And then they took us back. And when I got back, my mom had to learn how to walk. She was so sick that she couldn't walk anymore. And then she said, come here, child. 
and I was sitting on the floor and she looked at my head and she went like this and I was full of lies. I didn't even know. And she went and took all my hair off. The hair would just been like that. And uh, so uh, it took a few more months and then uh, Truman, President Truman was president at that time. And he got wind of it. And some of our people from Austria already came over here to this country. And he got wind of it and put pressure on Tito. Marshal Tito was the, was the president of Yugoslavia. He put pressure on to release everybody. And that's how we got back home to our hometown. And then we tried to find where my father was. My father was in a war and he was captured by the Americans and he was in Bavaria. So we united with my father in 1950, and so uh, this is this is how that had, how that started. So your father had been in the army, and the Americans captured him. Yeah, but it was nothing. It was just they had to do what they had to do. It was just a war. My father also was in a in a Croatian war. We had dual citizenship. We were Germans and Yugoslavian because my father and his mother was already born in Yugoslavia, but they immigrated from Austria uh, and Germany. That was the Donner Schwaben. How that all started is they had three groups that they, uh, in the late 1700s, the first ones went, because it was awful, all populated, uh, Germany and Austria had too many people didn't know what to do, what to do with them. So Kaiser Franz Josef, if you know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. he said to some people, to whoever wanted it, go over there. They, I gave everybody so much land, and uh, you can settle down there. So uh, a lot of them did because, and they left. It was called. It was called the Ulmer Schachtel, which they they the, 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 they put together wooden a wooden like a wooden box, and they would so many people would fit in there and went and the Daniel till they landed wherever they wanted to, but that was very bad land. It was it was uh, not. Uh, uh, it was like a like a jungle, so to speak, and those people had absolutely nothing to work with. They made all their stuff, whatever they found. There is not another nation, another another uh, uh, country, as hard working people as the Daniel Schwarm. Like the saying was, you can take everything away today from the Daniel Schwab, from the Donner Schwabe. Tomorrow he has it back because they were very, very ambitious. So uh, this was uh, a very, very lovely, like, it's, like I say, it said, uh, up and down the years, the years went up and down. It was, it was a very struggle for those people. And then they built cities, they built churches, they built beautiful countries, uh, uh, homes, uh, towns, picture perfect. And uh, uh, and then they had to leave that again. They had to, they had to leave there, in, uh, where they started out immigrating to Yugoslavia, and then they had to leave that, but they had there, and then they settled in in Austria or Germany. They left that and came over here. So it was up and down the years. That's what that, what I meant to say. Okay. So, um, how did you end up in America? How did I end up? Uh, actually, my family, uh, when we uh, uh, came out, my mom and my, uh, my three brothers, uh, uh, we also wanted to go because my, my father's uh, uh, two sisters, three sisters and a brother were already here. One was in Canada, uh, a, a sister and a brother in California, and one uh, sister of my dad's was here in Akron. And he also wanted to uh, to leave uh, uh, to better your life, okay? 
And so we went uh, to the German consul, uh, to the American consul, and this and that. And then they stopped the immigration. They stopped it because they had the quarter was full, and they couldn't take any more. So that's it. So then my folks got a nice apartment and bought their furniture. And so they said, "That's it." A year later, a letter came and said, "If we want to go, we can." So. My folks were then already said, no, should we believe everything now, what we got? And, you know, so they decided not to go. And then uh, when, I, when I was 18, 19, I met my husband, and uh, he was a coal miner in Germany. He was a true German. Uh, he said, how, how would it be if we, uh, if, uh, we go to America? I said, well, I can ask my aunt. I asked my aunt here. She went to Father Monsignor Wolf at uh, St. Bernard Church, was a German. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know anything about that. Anyway, he, anybody that came from our people to needed a signature that he has a job and has a place to live, he signed it. So everybody that came, came through St. Bernard, so to speak, through a, through a German uh, Catholic refuge. Uh, uh, center, whatever you want to call it. And uh, in six months, my husband and I were here. We were not even married yet, and my, my aunt already had made papers that we were married. So bang, bang, we got married over there, and uh, in no time we were here. So this, this is how I wound up here. And my brother that's here, uh, he, the one that's uh, two years younger than I am, he came a year before, but he went to California, and then he found out we were here. Then he came and uh, was, uh, stayed with me till he got married. That's how I got here. Um, so in my research, I've noticed that there's not a lot of like, like not a lot of people know about the like expulsion of the Dennis do you, how do you feel about that? Like, do you wish more I, uh, uh, the reason, I, I, I don't know, because uh, we, uh, our, uh, 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 Donald Schwab, when we started uh, to, to get the culture going and uh, to do everything the way, uh, culture, uh, life, uh, we didn't have, we didn't have the money to pay somebody to put that on a big bell, so to speak. Uh, there were millions and millions of our Daniel Schwaben that are dead because of the war. And we have people, when we left our homeland, we got scattered all over the world. We have them in Brazil, we have them in Australia, we have them in Argentina, we have them every continent on this earth, you will find Donald Schwaben. And they're very hardworking people. Like I said, I don't think there's another breed of people that will be, in my opinion, the best workers and the best people you can find. So, um the camps you were in, those were run by Tito and... Oh, yeah, by well. communism, yeah, yeah. And always behind barbed wire. Uh, they, they, uh, they were, uh, we were wired in, we couldn't go nowhere. They were outside uh, and uh, watching us. We couldn't go nowhere, we couldn't go nowhere. Did you ever try to escape? Uh, we did a few times because a lot of people did. And uh, we tried twice and it didn't work. And so my mother said, now we came that far, being alive, now we're not going to let them shoot us. So we waited out till we had the right papers to leave Yugoslavia and go to see my father. So um, the camps you were in, were those like work camps or they no no nobody could there was only uh, uh uh ladies and children and old people old people nobody nobody there was not no work no no we were just put in there to die starve starvation that's what it was 
and 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 when I hear somebody say, "Oh, I didn't have a shower for two days," what if you didn't have a shower for three and a half years and didn't even see a toothbrush, didn't even see this and that? I I wanna I I would like to to see how somebody uh, uh, if I could only. There was no pictures taken. There is absolutely nothing showing what we went through. That's another. That's another thing, okay? Uh, with the with the Jewish people, they had people that took pictures of this and that. And of course, did, uh, uh, Hitler did the wrong thing. Like every leader, they are cruel and rude. And what they do is very very bad and sad. Don't blame me. What Hitler did, I had nothing to do what he did. He did something very, very dumb. And if Hitler would not have been there, I wouldn't be here. You know, the whole world got upside down because of that second war. And then everybody says, oh, well, uh, we, le we, we, we have to learn something. Nobody learned anything. Look at the wars going on everywhere. All those beautiful little kids getting, get, getting uh, poisoned and, and getting killed. And what is, what is that? I, I, I can I can I get I get so upset when they talk about uh, we should learn from them uh, they never learned anything yet so would you say the reason the partisans did what they did was because of Hitler yeah because uh, they hated us they hated the Germans but yet yet we built Yugoslavia up. Yugoslavia would never have been what it was if we would not have come there. Not we, I mean my ancestors, okay? They never, they, they, those kind of people are um, entirely different, different. They hated us because we were Germans. But yet my father served in their army, they had to. Everybody, that, every man, when he was 18, he was pulled in. There was, at that time there was no war in Yugoslavia, but they were, disciplined and whatever, which is okay, okay. So as soon as he came home, he wasn't home two weeks, the, the Germans came and took him away. The Germans came and took 15, 16 year old boys into the war. Those, yeah, those, those boys had to go to the war not knowing how to even hold a gun. So it was sad, it was very, very sad what they did to us. Um, is there anything else um, that you can tell me about, um, like your experience that you want to say, or um, anything like that? Well, uh, I uh, uh, the the biggest regret is that I I missed a lot of schooling. My schooling is uh, I educated myself. I'm a self educator, if you want to say that that way. Whatever I know, I taught myself. And that is my biggest, biggest cry, issue about the whole situation. That I did not have a childhood, I didn't have a youth. Uh, we came to, uh, to, to Germany, I was 14. I started to go to work because we were five people in the house and we needed, everybody needed to work. And that was, that was it. And then we came here. My husband and I came here with $40 in our pocket. Had to go to work right away in order to get uh, uh, built up and, and buy our old home and at least it was ours and be proud of it. Had you ever been to Germany before you were 14? Oh no, 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 no. You just lived in Yugoslavia your whole Yeah, so I started well, when I started school, it was it was German. My mother, when my mother went to school, it was strictly strictly Yugoslavian. My mother never learned how to write German when she went to school in Yugoslavia. My grandmother, my mom's mom, when she went to school, it was strictly German. So it was up and down the yard, like I said, up and down the years, and then. Uh, And then we went uh, uh, to Germany. I was too old to go 
well, not too old, but I had to work. That's that's, that's all I know. How, what 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 was left for me? I, I, I there was no school thought of because I had to help along for them to get on their feet. I think that's all I have. Is there anything else you want to add? Well, like I said, I started Yugoslavia. I, uh, at one point, I couldn't even talk German anymore, only Croatian. So then we went to Germany. I had to learn their language. I had to learn that German because it's different. In every town in Yugoslavia, every Donauschwaben town had their own slang. They, it was all different. And then I, I changed three times also in my life. And then came here, didn't speak one word of English, started to work right away and build up another life. So my life had changed also three times. And now I'm 82 and I'm very proud of it that I'm alive and can do what I can do. Okay. Well, uh, I will. I said here. I cannot even say enough about the Donauschwaben people, uh, about their uh, ability, what they can do with ten fingers. There was no electricity, there was no running water, there's no, there was nothing, 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 yeah. And, and then of course, uh, uh, when we say up and down the Yare, uh, search for a new home, and we found, we all found a new homeland in the States and God bless America, I, I cannot say enough. The America did us all good. We all had, uh, uh, could better ourselves and live in freedom and a good life. But make sure that you put that on, uh, who are the Donau Schwaben, up and down the years and uh, in search of a new homeland, which was here, but the past we have to leave behind. And when you can imagine them building a, 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 a little schachtel, what they call a schachtel, which means a box, uh, out of wood, and put themselves in there and travel along the Daniel and find their land. It, it, is, it is really hard to describe if you don't have pictures to show because nobody had anything. When they took us at the border, that clothes that I had on and everybody else, that clothes we walked out when we were released for three and a half years. That was it. It was, uh, it, it shows you what a person can, uh, can take uh, and you want to survive. Without medication, without a comb. My mom would comb my hair with her fingers. I had long braids, but then they all fell out. <laughs> I, I had new hair coming in, but uh, uh, it's hard to describe, that's all I can say. If you didn't go through it, you don't believe it. Right. Our life, the Donner Schwaben life, was entirely a different story. Yes. Uh, I can remember as a little child, they were talking about America. Uh, we had people in town also already getting a little bit populated. Too many people in the house couldn't handle it no more. So my, my, father's aunt, my 
my father's sister's daughter came here to Roma Falls. And I still got to meet her when we got here. She was 93. She left our hometown when she was 17. Just went on a boat. You know how long they took them to come here at that time? Couple months, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, over a month. Anyway, she settled, and there were a lot of young ladies that had to leave, and also young men. Uh, not only from Yugoslavia, from, uh, from uh, Ukraine, from, uh, 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 from different parts of Europe. And they settled in, in uh, they settled in uh, Pennsylvania in a coal miner. And those ladies, those young ladies, went over there and took care of those young people, of the men that were working in a coal mine, did their laundry, did their washing and so on. So she met one, he was a Polak, Polish descent, and they got married. And then they, he made an, enough money, then they came to Cocker Falls, bought a home, bought a farm, and worked on a farm. Then he died, and then she was sold the farm. She had two children, and then she married won't believe that. Then she married a guy that came from our hometown that was left widower. She married that guy, but he also had passed away. But she still spoke the German that the people talked in our hometown, the same, same language. I mean, the, you, you, uh, 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 when, when I say South, like like the southerners speak or so on. So she, when we came, I could not believe it how she still talked that kind of a German, with all the years that she was here already then. She was then already here over, oh my goodness, she was 90, she was over 60 years already here, over 70 years here, and uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, there's, there's so many different stories about our people, what they had to go through to, in search of a better life. Um, some had it harder, some had it whatever.